Hello, and welcome back for another episode of Podcast DX, the show that brings you interviews with people just like you, whose lives were forever changed by a medical diagnosis. I'm Lita. I'm Ron. And I'm tired. <laughs> She's Jean Marie. Collectively, we are the hosts of Podcast DX. On today's show, we will be discussing a type of hypothyroid disease called Hashimoto's disease with leaky gut syndrome. Our guest today is Jody. Jody is a friend of mine. Uh, she's also a scuba diver. I met her several years ago through Dive Heart, where we work with children, adults, and veterans with disabilities. And I talked with her about what we do on the podcast here, and she was very interested in sharing her story with us. So welcome to the show, Jody. Thanks, Ron. It's great to be here. Let's first let the audience know a bit more about this disease. As with several of the other recent podcasts we've presented, Hashimoto's is also an invisible illness, meaning from the eyes of the, a casual observer, there doesn't seem to be any issue with the individual. They seem perfectly healthy. That is correct. Thyroid-related disorders can go in two directions. Overactive thyroid hormones create hyperthyroidism, and underactive thyroid that do not produce enough hormones are called hypothyroidism. You can also get nodules or growths on the thyroid. These growths can be benign or cancerous. Today's topic will cover an underactive thyroid condition, and it's an autoimmune disorder, specifically the disorder called Hashimoto's disease, named after the man that discovered it in the early 1900s, occurring almost as, twice as often in women than in men. Hashimoto's disease is now recognized as an autoimmune disease and the primary cause of hypothyroidism. It is characterized by an invasion of the thyroid tissues by leukocytes, mainly the T lymphocytes, and it is sometimes associated with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Jody, when were you first diagnosed with Hashimoto's? In the spring of 2008. Well, before you received your diagnosis, were there symptoms that may have led you to your physician or healthcare provider and that were bothersome to you? And uh, actually, were you ever misdiagnosed with anything besides Hashimoto's disease before somebody actually put a name to your specific issue? Well, I knew I had a problem with yeast in my gut. Um, I was going to my doctor every three to four months for reoccurring yeast infections. So when she ran a few simple blood tests and came up with an autoimmune condition, I knew something bigger was going on. But it looked like it wasn't really clear um, for a little while yet. Uh, once I started feeling better, I realized I had a lot of symptoms I didn't even know about. After all, I had a very stressful job, a really long commute, I didn't get enough exercise or sleep, and I was getting older every day. So this is all just part of that, right? Oh, sure, sure. Well, Jody, once you had the diagnosis, what changed in your life? Well, um, I knew I had the yeast and I knew I had an autoimmune, and um, I knew that I knew that I believed that there was a connection. And so I went to my doctor and said, look, I know this is controversial, but um, can we try and get the candida or, or the, the yeast and the, the consequential leaky gut under control first before starting um, a lifetime of synthetic thyroid hormones? She agreed and gave me three months for my little experiment. Um, the great thing was that in three days, I started feeling better. Wow. wow. In three weeks, I was a different person. Oh, oh my God. God. And in three months, my thyroid numbers actually started wow. to come down. Oh, it's great that you listened to your, you know, your gut. Yeah. Yeah. Were, <laughs> right? yeah. But I'm um, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, my mother had done uh, her master's research on yeast and autoimmune back in the early 80s. So oh. There was nice. a little what bit a of a coincidence. Yeah, a little nice. bit of a coincidence there. Oh, so. fantastic. You had a great resource. Yes, I did. Um, so not only did it take an impressive uh, regimen of antifungals, um, primarily a drug called nystatin, which doesn't have um, any side effects oh, over yes. a long uh, period of time. But I also strictly adhered to the um, candida diet, which is a form of an elimination diet. So things like no sugar, no alcohol, no fungus, like mushrooms or yeast, or the rinds off of melons, no vinegar, very low glycemic foods, um, so nothing like bananas or mangoes. No simple carbs that turn into sugar right away, like pasta, potatoes, no wheat, all wow. of that. We've wow. actually had a number of people asking about the elimination diet and how it affects you know, your entire well-being, but also like, does it clear up your skin or does it have any other side effects? And 
yeah, a lot of people are very interested in that. And it's not just about the elimination diet, right? It's about what's happening in your gut and your Mm -hmm. microbiome. Mm -hmm. So you start feeding the good um, bacteria Mm -hmm. and creating an environment where the bad stuff, like the yeast, can't thrive. Okay. Um, Then you have really good things happening, right? And then everything starts to stay in your gut where it's supposed to. Sure, sure. So once I started doing those three things, and let me tell you, going cold turkey off of sugar... And all the places that it's hidden um, was incredibly difficult. I'm sure. Um, But in three days, uh, like I said, I had this this transformational um, change. And then over the period of time, my intense fatigue went away. Um, And fatigue is not just, I want to take a nap all the time. It's feeling exhausted, trying to take a nap and realizing you can't even go to sleep because you're not tired. You're just fatigued. I had a brain fog where I couldn't copy a three-digit number from one spreadsheet to another without looking at it four or five times because I couldn't remember the number. Um, And as a finance person, that was a bit of a challenge in my day-to-day work. My energy levels and my general happiness came back. My talking tummy, which you could hear across the boardroom, all of a sudden was silent. And all sorts of other things just started disappearing. And I I realized that I had this huge list of symptoms that I didn't know about only until they were gone. So it took me about a year of um, clean eating and then slowly adding everything back into my diet uh, to get the yeast uh, under control. Um, And then for a long time, I would only eat the trigger foods like, you know, uh, sweetbreads on at Easter or Christmas and you know sandwiches on just really small small amounts on on special occasions and that worked really really well um, I was able to be um, really just under control mm-hmm. um, for about seven or eight years but I only focused on the yeast um, and I never really looked at the bigger picture of Hashimoto's and and that would come um, later my condo flooded in 2014, and the perfect storm um, came together. I didn't have a kitchen for three months. Oh, okay. I ate a lot of McDonald's yeah. and mm-hmm. pasta and yeah. fast processed foods. Mm-hmm. Um, probably had a lot of wine. Um, I also had a short stint with a steroidal inhaler, and all this stuff the yeast absolutely loves and adores. Mm-hmm. And for the next three years, I was on this horrible roller coaster of ups and downs um, with my thyroid flaring at least three times and then I'd get it sort of under control but never really um, never really getting back to where I was before um, before 2014 Mm -hmm. and then in March of of last year of 2017 I decided enough was enough and it was time to take my life back okay good well during our research we found that the symptoms can include fatigue like you mentioned Uh, increased sensitivity to cold, brittle nails, hair loss, unexplained weight gain, muscle aches, joint pain, depression, and memory lapses. Uh, Were any of these bothersome to you besides the fatigue which you mentioned? Yes, almost all of them, except for perhaps the the muscle aches and and joint pain. Um, The brain fog, like I said before, the inability to focus, general lack of motivation, um, feeling like you're just moving in slow motion, trying to take a shower that takes twice as long as you should, and you're trying to hurry, and it just doesn't work. Um, As Ron knows from from our diving and our work with Dive Heart, my nails were constantly breaking. I was wearing two times as many um, wetsuits as anybody else in the pool. Because you were cold? Because I was cold. Mm -hmm. Um... And in fact, this past winter, I didn't dive at all because I was having such issues. Um, I've lost over half my hair since 2014. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, Yeah, thank you. Fortunately, I have a lot to lose, but that's not really the point, (laughs) right? Right. Right. Um, And uh, during the last flare-up I had, I gained 20 pounds in about a month, um, and it just wouldn't come off. And during that time, um, I binge-watched Netflix for about a month straight. Mm-hmm. Um, never left my home in February of 2017 for much of anything. Um, and I've since that learned... That sounds like depression. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I have since learned that this is depression, even though I didn't feel sad at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also had a lot of anxiety. So I'd get really worked up and overthink um, the simplest things. 
And I was this amazingly crabby person, snapping at strangers and longtime friends about ridiculous things. That explains a lot. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you do? You mean you do you go to your doctor and say, "Hey, I'm I'm really crabby." I, you know, do you even think that that's a, a symptom? Well, you weren't you. For I sure. wasn't. I definitely wasn't me. Yeah. Um, but the worst part was, you know. I was like having this this out of body experience. I knew I was being this horrible person, but there was nothing I could really do to stop the words coming out of my mouth. And then later, I'd go into this anxiety spiral, thinking about everything that I'd just said and over analyzing and agonizing over it. Okay, okay. Well, um, and what out of all these symptoms that we've discussed or listed, which of these symptoms would you say bothers you the most? I think that's really hard to say. Um, the thing about this condition is when you're in it and all these things are happening to your body, you don't even realize what's going on. Um, so you can't really fight it. When I was on the couch watching Netflix and watching my dishes pile up on the counter until I was out of dishes, mm-hmm. I, I just was, you know, I'm, I'm just... Right, you're in the middle right? of it. So you're you in don't the middle really, of it. Right, I, didn't, right. I didn't realize that I was wasting my... or My, my entire life was was disappearing. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the knowledge to then be able to combat it. Um, And I think that's the hardest part. And there has to be this, this event or this trigger that says, hey, you've got a problem, you've got to do something so that you can get high enough out of the hole that you're in to realize that you're there's actually a hole there. Okay. But when you have that trigger and things start happening, what do you do to alleviate the symptoms? Well, this last time, um, you know, the first time around, I got lucky. My doctor just started running these blood tests, and and we put everything together. The second time around, when I was so far in this hole, um, my mom had come across a webinar called The Thyroid Secret. I thought, aha, I've been living with this for almost 10 years. I know this stuff, and I don't need to watch this. There's other stuff on Netflix more exciting, right? Mm Mm-hmm. But I'm so grateful I listened to my mother again, and I watched it. And I realized I had focused 100% on the yeast before, and I completely ignored the thyroid. And watching this series really just drove me down the rabbit hole of research on Hashimoto's and realized I really should have been looking at like 60-40, 50-50 um, between the yeast and the Hashimoto's. And what I learned was that there are three things that have to be in place for an autoimmune you have to have a genetic predisposition, an environmental trigger, and a leaky gut. And then I learned about how to deal with all of those because you can get a leaky gut from things other than just a candida overgrowth. Okay. Can, there's a lot of other underlying infections, um, food intolerances, um, things like that. Okay. Wow, that's, uh, that's incredible. Uh, Moving on to another part of the issues that you're dealing with, according to the American Thyroid Association, the gut thyroid condition, or excuse me, connection, the gut thyroid connection can be a vicious cycle as hypothyroidism causes poor digestive health. Poor digestive health may cause hypothyroidism. Studies have shown that hypothyroidism can cause intestinal permeability or leaky gut, which you were mentioning, and that allows undigested food into the bloodstream and in, instigates an immune attack. That's why it's called an autoimmune disease. You can end up with bloating, constipation, diarrhea, and gas. That's right. And the results don't necessarily stay within the digestive system itself. Because it causes an immune system inflammation or immune system response, other body systems can also be affected. You can end up with chronic fatigue, joint pain, skin rashes, nutritional deficiencies, and a weakened immune system from it working overtime. Um, Jody, have you experienced any of these types of problems related to the leaky gut syndrome? Oh, absolutely. I've had all this and more by um, March of 2018. Um, I was tested for food intolerances and found out most of what I was eating every day was causing me harm. Oh, Especially no. all that really healthy, homemade, no sweetener added yogurt, oh, right? No. Everything that was supposed to be really great for mm-hmm. creating a, a, a negative environment for the yeast, mm-hmm. the whole grains, um, the high fiber, low glycemic um, things. Yeah, oh, pretty no. much all of that was, was actually learned, causing harm. Did you learn that from listening to that thyroid webinar? Um, I learned that there are top six um, most inflammatory foods. Okay. Um, and 
dairy. I, I did do a blood test. Um, now, these blood tests tend to be on the controversial side because a lot of times they'll react to what you're eating day, you know, mm-hmm. currently at that time. Um, but I scored very high on the uh, on the dairy side okay. um, and to the proteins in the dairy called mm-hmm. casein. Mm-hmm. Um, not so much the lactose. Um, and then, of course, all of the grains um, and some random things like bananas mm-hmm. and asparagus and cinnamon and nutmeg um, as also being um, things that I had developed an intolerance for. So are you on a water diet right now? <laughs> <laughs> so wow. Sounds like you're limited. Um, you know, it's really not that hard. Okay. It's, um, I'm actually on the autoimmune paleo diet. Okay. Um, and plus all of the food sensitivities and intolerances. Um, but there's a lot of different things out there that you can eat. Okay. And fortunately, because I've been through this once before, I just modified what I was already doing to take out a lot more stuff. Got it. I don't know about you, Lita or Jean, but I'm mm-hmm. totally bewildered by all of this. With well, the trying to eat healthy and mm-hmm. all of this, from here in Utah, it doesn't seem like a lot of the things that we're eating are as healthy as we think they might be. Well, and that's true, um, especially if you have an autoimmune condition. So what I've learned is all grains, um, for example, have anti-nutrients in them. I didn't even know there was such a thing as an anti-nutrient. Um, but if you have a thyroid condition or an autoimmune condition, um, grains have, um, I believe it's lectins that are in them. Okay. Um, and I always get confused. There's lectin and phytates, and, and they're in... Um, some of them are in grains and, and others are in legumes. And so both of those groups of foods um, actually cause harm if you have an autoimmune condition. Same thing with nightshades. Okay, right, um, right. So in other words, Ron, it might be healthy for you, but it's not healthy for Jody because she has an autoimmune or for Ann because she has lupus. So people with autoimmune diseases have a, a more sensitive food diet than you would right and it's not that it's not it's not about being healthy it's about your body's ability to um accept it because your body those those parts of the food are going to have that impact on any on anybody that consume them um but it's your ability to respond to that in 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 an okay manner and my body just doesn't have that anymore well, I guess I probably should have been a little bit more clear with that. It's not knowing, uh, again, about having the the thyroid issue for the, the longest time that all the stuff that you thought was healthy for you wasn't necessarily healthy for you. So, I mean, that's no pun intended food for thought for other people. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You've been thinking about that one for a while. <laughs> Um, earlier, you mentioned that there can be depression or memory problems. Um, would you like to tell us more about that? Um, yeah, so I, I learned a lot about depression um, through my research into Hashimoto's. Um, like I said, I didn't realize that that was what I was going through because um, I thought depression was just about being sad. And, um, and, I guess it's it's not. It's about um, getting up in the morning and sitting on your couch and opening up your computer and um, finding really terrible programs on Netflix and watching four seasons of it um, back to back to back. It's about getting up um, to get something to eat and sitting on the couch again and then taking that that dish of that dish that you just finished and either setting it on the floor next to you or when you get up to go to the bathroom, setting it on the counter in the kitchen, maybe with food um, still left in it, and then falling asleep a little bit on the couch and then staying up until about 2 a.m. to watch just one more episode and then doing that all over again. And then one day you wake up and you realize that you're trying to get a bowl of cereal, but you don't have any clean bowls left. <laughs> and yeah. your, your kitchen counter is elbow deep in stuff. Um, but you can't you can't eat anything until you wash that one dish it, right. that dish out, um, and that's that's depression. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, that was that was my month of February. And Ron, as you know, I'm uh, naturally a very active, um, never stop um, person, so highly out of the norm for me. Right, and we were talking 
you know, for, for a long time. And I would hear you, you know, say things like this, which seemed out of the ordinary uh, for me to hear you talk that way because I never knew you to, to, to be like that because you're always on the go and never home. Mm-hmm. So to say that you're staying home and just watching TV and just hanging out and not really doing anything active was, was a real surprise. But obviously now we know why. Yeah. Right. Right. And and I think looking back on it, the hardest part was I didn't know. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I didn't. When you're in I wasn't. It, you when you're know. in it, right. you can't right. connect the dots. Right. Well, did um, any friends or family members happen to mention, you know, actually come out and say, you know. No, nobody really knew okay. I was doing this. Okay. Okay. I mean, people knew afterwards. I mean, I and I did leave my condo. I did leave every once in a while, and I would I would do um, another organization. I would I would go skiing. I would do adaptive mm-hmm. skiing, mm-hmm. and frankly, skiing is my number one passion in life, more even than diving. And um, adaptive adventures got me out of the house because I was going to go skiing with somebody else, with mm-hmm. somebody who couldn't. So that was your that was your encouragement to get out of the house. That Thank and I God had to, you had something. Yeah, and I had to I had to pick somebody else up. Um, okay. And so a couple times, uh, uh, maybe once a week, um, I would I would go skiing. But that kind of becomes a chore to do rather than hey, I'm looking forward to doing this. You get out because you're having to do it for somebody else, whereas otherwise you might just be like, oh, I just don't feel like doing it. By the grace of God, it was skiing. Um, you would be absolutely correct if it was anything else. But skiing is the one thing that, that would, have, would have and did drive me out of my home no matter what. The opportunity to ski. Um, Recreational therapy is a very strong force. Yeah, well, and if, it's, if, it's, your, <laughs> if, it's, your, if it's your thing, right? Yes. It's your mm-hmm. passion. Whatever mm-hmm. yours is, right. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I think well, it was skiing that right. got me out. Well, that's great. Uh, I know that the digestive tract contains the second highest amount of nerves and communicates directly with the brain. They were even talking about gut migraines now. We're going to talk about that Mm -hmm. later. Uh, Brain connectivity with the gut or the digestive system has been well documented now. Since leaky gut disrupts healthy communication channels to the brain, therefore poor digestion can mean poor concentration and memory problems. Right. Um, Jody, have you noticed you were saying that you have the brain, you know, brain fog. Have you had any other issues with concentration? Oh, absolutely. Um, while I was able to concentrate on um, Netflix, um, but being able to write a letter or um, complete a, a task for work, um, things like that, um, very difficult Um and then basic memory things like I forgot a lot of words. I oh, found okay. myself um, unable to remember things while I was talking. Right. Um, the usual go into the kitchen. Why did I come in here? For, mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know. Yep. What was I looking for again? Mm-hmm. Welcome things to like my that. world. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah, that, that's that's a big challenge. Yeah. Well, um, luckily there is a plethora of information out there uh, regarding Hashimoto's, and there are a number of books and websites and support groups, and we'll be sure to list all of those on our website. But uh, Jody, what additional advice do you have for our listeners? So my number one piece of advice that I've given to everybody that I've come across um, that's suffering from Hashimoto's or or high hypothyroidism outside of the Hashimoto's um, realm has been to get a book by Dr. Amy Myers okay. and it's called the um, the thyroid connection okay. okay we'll make sure that that's on our website mm-hmm. and it is it is um, phenomenal because it goes through in a very easy to understand way the physiology of what's happening okay. um, and it goes through and, and Dr. Myers suffered from Graves disease, which is Mm -hmm. the hyperthyroidism. Mm -hmm. Um, But it goes through all of that. She has a very set protocol, um, which is related to the autoimmune um, paleo diet, um, which I did. And um, the other thing is to, in my opinion, um, follow the functional medicine approach. Okay. And functional medicine um, looks at the whole body Mm -hmm. Um, and they look at finding the root cause. Okay. So whether it's yeast, whether it's, um, 
uh, bacterial overgrowth in the gut, whether it's uh, parasites, um, other types of infections that's causing the leaky gut. They find that and they fix that and they fix the whole body instead of just saying, here's some some thin synthroid that you're gonna take every day that's gonna mask some of the symptoms, but it's not really going to make you any better. Mm -hmm. um, so starting with that book and then finding a good functional medicine doctor, um, I personally believe that you can um, put this into remission. That has been um, my goal. I think Ron would say it's um, very much a very zealot-like approach um, that I've, I've had for the last 18 months, um, but it's also the best I've felt in 17 years. Well, oh, you're, you're you very go. successful at it. Well, thank you very much for being on our show. Yeah, thank you, Jody. And for all that information. Really appreciate it. Yes, Jody, thanks for coming in. We, this, is, this is amazing. This is uh, really good stuff. Thank you. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share um, with others. And if more people can, can uh, have the results that I have and feel the way that I do, then I want to be able to help with that in any way that I can. Perfect. That's wonderful. That's what we're Thank here you. for. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. And if our listeners have any questions or comments related to today's show, they can contact us at podcastdx at yahoo.com, through our website, podcastdx.com, on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, or Instagram. And if you have a moment to spare, please give us a five-star review on the iTunes podcast app. And please keep in mind that this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health care provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new health care regime. And never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you may have heard on this podcast. Till next week. Bye.